Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. After World War II, many new companies emerged trying to break into the tractor market. Just like the Ford Motor Company, Chevrolet wanted to develop their own farm tractor. In 1946, one independent contractor tried his hand at building a tractor for Chevrolet. This is a 1946 Chevrolet prototype tractor. It was actually built in Paris, Kentucky by a man named Willie Nutter Jr. He was an outside contractor who did special work for General Motors. The tractor was built right there in the town of Paris, Kentucky, where Willie Nutter and his family lived. They had a 500 acre farm. They raised thoroughbred horses. Willie Jr. was born as a deaf mute. His parents didn't want to send him to school for fear that the kids would make fun of him. So they hired teachers and tutors to come to their house and he was very well educated. His father built a machine shop inside of a big tobacco barn so that no one would know it was there. This tractor was made as a prototype. It was gonna be put in production in 1946. 1946 was the end of World War II. All the car companies, General Motors included, they were trying to get back into business building cars and trucks. There was a very big backlog of demand for new cars and trucks. People hadn't had any since 1941. They wanted them. At the time this tractor was made, they decided to concentrate on the cars and trucks because they knew that they could sell them. At this point in time in 1946, this was an unknown quantity. They really weren't sure whether they could sell the tractors or not. And by the time the demand caught up with the production of the cars and trucks, the desire for them to build this tractor had just dropped off. And at that point in time, they just forgot all about it and never put it into production. So this is the only one that was ever made. The engine, transmission, and rear end is from a ton and a half Chevy truck. The engine is a 216 cubic inch. The transmission is a four speed truck type transmission with a granny or bulldog four speed. And the rear end is a two speed rear end right, right out of the truck. It has hydraulic brakes on it, which if this had been put into production at the time would have been a first, it would have been a 46 model tractor with hydraulic brakes. And they didn't come out until the early 70s on tractors. One of their things that they wanted to do during the time they were making this tractor was use as many available parts as what they already had in inventory. That would have cut down on the assembly cost. Would have, the, the essence of it would have been there would have been a bigger profit at the end of the day by using as many parts as you already have. I would say the whole tractor would be unique at the time because in 1946, a 50 horsepower tractor would have been a big tractor. And here was a tractor with approximately 90 horsepower going to be turned loose on a market that probably wouldn't have known what to do with it. How long it would have lasted would have been another thing because this particular engine is a Babbitt rod engine. They have dippers on the rods. There's no oil pressure to the rods. How long it would have stood up in a strain plowing would have been remained to be seen. I, I would say that there was not a lot of testing done simp simply by the fact that at the end of it, it was just pushed outside the barn and left to rust down. Well, I found the tractor by accident by going to look at an old used truck that was for sale. When I got there, the man had a barn full of old trucks, cars, and tractors. I saw this in there and became more fascinated with the tractor than the truck. And the short version of the story is, at the end of the day, I took the tractor home instead of the truck. Well, it was quite rough. There was no paint on it. The tires had gone flat. The rims sank down in the ground. The engine block had frozen up and broken. And 
there was no no kind of rubber left on the steering wheel it was just a metal frame most of it was rusted through I've replaced all the rims and my wife helped me for all during the winter of 2001 was when we put this back together she helped me do a lot of the sanding and preparation getting ready for this I like the fact that it's unique and one of a kind that's one of the things that I like about some of the other stuff that I have and the fact that it's a prototype to me that makes it stand out.